Salams and welcome. You're watching the Daily Roundup, People's Dispatch's selection of some of the top stories from around the world. First, let's take a look at today's headlines. UN figures on worldwide refugees and displaced people crossed 100 million in 2022. Additional sentences for the Jirboa prison break escapees in Israel. The Palestinian government urges the ICC to investigate Shirin Abu Akleh's killing. And Chile increases minimum wage by over 14%. First up, the number of people fleeing human rights violations, violence, conflict and persecution has surpassed 100 million in the first half of 2022, the United Nations said on Monday, May the 23rd. According to these UN figures, the number of displaced peoples around the world had already crossed 90 million by the end of 2021. The sharp rise in the number is a result of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, which has displaced more than 8 million Ukrainians so far. Six million of those have been forced to take refuge in other countries. The United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, Filippo Grandi, speaking about the figures said, I quote, 100 million is a stark figure, sobering and alarming in equal measure. It's a record that should never have been set, end quote. He added, and I quote again, this must serve as a wake-up call to resolve and prevent destructive conflicts, end persecution and address the underlying causes that force innocent people to flee their homes." End quote. The 100 million figure represents 1% of the global population and is equivalent to the 14th most populous country in the world. Other related figures regarding refugees, asylum seekers and displaced persons were also highlighted. The rise in the numbers has also att been attributed to the new and intensified fighting in conflicts in countries such as Ethiopia, Burkina Faso, Myanmar, Nigeria, Afghanistan and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. According to the numbers, the highest number of refugees continue to come from Syria, followed by Venezuela and Afghanistan. Turkey continues to host the highest number of refugees at 3.7 million, uh, followed by Colombia at close to 1.75 million and Uganda at one close to 1.5 million. Another alarming statistic revealed by the UN was the displacement of over 23 million people, mainly in the Asia-Pacific region, was due to natural disasters and weather-related events such as floods, storms, cyclones, which once again put the spotlight on climate change. In our second story, the six Palestinian prisoners who escaped from the high-security Gilboa prison in Israel on the 6th of September last year have been given an additional five years in prison. The five-year sentences will be added to their existing prison terms. Additionally, they were also given eight-month suspended sentences along with fines of 5,000 Israeli shekels, which is about US dollars 1,500 each. The six prisoners who carried out the daring escape are Mahmoud Arda, 46, Mohammad Arda, 40, Yaqub Qadri, 49, Ahyam Kam uh, Kamamji, sorry, 35, Munadil Nufayat, 26, and Zakaria Zubedi, 49. Four other prisoners being held in the Jilboa prison were charged with aiding the prisoner's escape and given an additional four-year prison term, added to their current sentences. They were also charged 2,000 shekels, which is about $600 each. The Israeli judge who handed down these harsh punishments said that the prison break paralyzed Israel for days, threatened public security and cost a huge amount of money for their recapture. Jilboa was considered to be one of Israel's most high security and tightly guarded prisons. It caused massive widespread celebration and joy among Palestinians who hailed the escapees as heroes. The six prisoners were recaptured within a span of about a week or two, following which they were brutally beaten and tortured by Israeli prison authorities. They were also placed in solitary confinement and denied medical treatment. The prison break also resulted in other brutal and inhumane measures by Israeli authorities across prisons in the country, with Palestinians being separated based on political affiliation, uh, abruptly moved from one prison to another and denied several basic necessary prison facilities, leading to widespread protests. We move on to our third story now. The Palestinian Foreign Ministry said on Monday that it sent a letter to the International Criminal Court regarding the Israeli human rights violations and war crimes being committed against Palestinians. The letter particularly highlights the recent killing of well-known Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akleh, which it described, I quote, as a crime of execution, end quote. The letter is accompanied with a file including documentation of the killing as well as other crimes and violations. The Palestinian Foreign Minister, Riyad al-Maliki, uh, called on the ICC to add Shireen's killing to the list of crimes committed by Israel in order to facilitate an official investigation. 
Abu Akhli was killed early, early this month uh, by Israeli sniper fire while she was covering an Israeli military raid in the city of Jenin in the occupied West Bank. Her killing was met with global anger and outrage, with widespread condemnation and calls for investigation and accountability for the killers. Israel recently stated that it would not open a criminal investigation into the killing, however. Palestinians, including her family, have called for an independent international investigation without the participation of the Israeli state. Last month, journalist groups around the world had filed a formal complaint with the ICC regarding Israel's deliberate and systematic targeting of journalists in the occupied Palestinian territories. The complaint was filed on behalf of four Palestinian journalists, Abu Ahmad Hussain, Yasser Murtaja, Muat Amarne and uh, Nadel Ishtaye, who've all been killed or wounded by Israeli forces. And finally, Chile's government on Friday passed into law a 14.3% increase in the minimum wage in the country. The increase is said to be the largest nominal increase in minimum wage in the past uh, close to 30 years. Uh, Chile's current president, Gabriel Boric, following the enactment of the law said, and I quote, Our government is deeply committed to promoting decent work, which guarantees that the workers of our country can have a fair income, end quote. He further added that the increase will benefit some 850,000 people in the country who are caught in an economy experiencing rising inflation. The annual inflation rate in Chile is above 10%, the highest it's been for again close to 30 years. Additionally, the rate of interest on consumer loans for Chileans has reached over 26% in the middle of, the May, of May, sorry, the highest it's been since 2015, the, the Chilean central bank said on Monday. The rise in minimum wage will take place in two stages following its notification in the official gazette. The first raise will be from 350,000 pesos, which is about 410 US dollars, to 380,000 pesos, which is closer to 450 US dollars, on the 1st of May. And then another raise to 400,000 pesos, uh, which takes it up to for, uh, over 470 US dollars on the 1st of August. This represents a total raise of about 60 US dollars. A third raise will take place in January of next year, taking the minimum wage to 410,000 pesos. President Boric has earlier stated that by the end of his term in the year 2026, the minimum wage will be raised to around 585 US dollars. The law passed on Monday also includes clauses for a compensatory monthly contribution to face the increase in the cost of basic food basket where it specified that uh, the CBP contribution will be adjusted month by month based on the annualized inflation of the basic food basket. It further provides for a subsidy of 26 US dollars in May and 30 US dollars in August for around 180,000 small businesses to increase their workers' basic incomes. That was bad. That's all we have on this episode of uh, the daily, what is it, roundup, again, sorry. And that's all we have on this episode of the daily roundup. For more on these stories, head to our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and give us a follow on the social media platform of your choice. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Yeah,